welcome back to Master Your Ash. I'm your host, Michael Prisdale, and today I will be reviewing the Espinosa Murcielago in Toro. Box pressed, 6x52 ring gauge cigar. And this is a, has a really pretty shimmery band to it. Really elegant, kind of fine box press to it. And it is an uber dark chocolate wrapper with some really nice minerality located on the actual wrapper leaf itself. The reflection and the shimmer from that Espinosa bat band for the Murcielago, really pretty. Overall, just a beautiful looking cigar. Um, very rustic, kind of with all those extra little fermentation notes. Body gives off some plentiful aromas, leather, some spice, some cocoa. Dark molasses flavors. And nice earthy notes on the cold draw too. Really, really nice. Spark this bad boy up. <clears throat> really nice. So a little backstory on the Mercia Lago. Well, originally this was released in 2009 in collaboration with My Father Cigars. That's the factory that originally produced this particular blend for Espinosa Cigars. Since then, the blend was lost and AJ Fernandez and Eric Espinosa got together and kind of recreated what they say is a better version of that 2009 blend from the My Father Cigar Factory. So this is in collaboration with AJ Fernandez, Eric Espinosa, of course, for Espinosa Cigars. It is available in three other Vitolas, a Robusto, a Lancero, and a Rabito, which is, from what I saw online, looks like a Lonsdale shape. It's about 46 by six and a half. So very traditional kind of sizes to come out with a line. And this kind of comes right along the same time as the Batman movie, which I have not seen yet. So leave me a comment below if you have. Let me know if I should watch it. There's a little bit of pepper to the retro hill, nothing stinging, but yet very pleasing. Just to let you know that it's there and kind of touch you on the shoulder. Leather, cola, little dark chocolate, but all very well balanced. You know, the flavors are, are all there and working together in harmony, which is really, really nice just to start off uh, the lighting of the cigar. It really makes me happy about where this is gonna go. And it is a box press cigar burning really, really nice and sharp, which is also great, the draw on it. is tremendous. I don't talk enough in the reviews about draw, but this is got a really, really nice smoke volume, very chewy, and the draw on it is exceptionally perfect, just in every way. It's, it's a combination of like, it has just enough kind of bite to the draw where it's not too loose, but it's also not tight or packed that too much, too tight or, you know, stuck in any way, shape or form. So looking really forward to seeing what the rest of the cigar is gonna hold for me. The price point on these, $9 a stick, box of 20, $180 a box. So very value driven, value priced in my own personal opinion. Cigars under $10, I'm always gonna call them value sticks. Jumping into the blend, the wrapper on this cigar is San Andres. The binder and filler are both Nicaraguan. So we're back in San Andres mode which if you know me and my reviews, I love it. Alrighty. So we are back, moving on through this first third of the Murcielago in Toro. And so far, I mean, you can check it out. The burn is going and we are razor, razor sharp. I mean, to a T, <laughs> razor sharp. This is one of the best burning cigars that I have had in a while. Flavor note wise, on the retro hail, spice ramped up. We're still not at that stinging stage, but we're definitely right there at the door. A lot of nice peppery notes to it. On the palate, almost a cookie dough kind of flavor. Um, definitely not nutty at all, more dark molasses, dark rum esque in that kind of like rich demerara sugary kind of way not that the cigar is sweet or has a sweet tip but kind of like 
The easiest way for me to describe it is with Demerara sugar because it's like that gritty kind of dark sugar that you you have. You know, you you have like brown sugar and then you have like sugar in the raw sugar. And that's that debonair, uh, that debonair. That's that Demerara like ref, like uber turbinado style sugar that's kind of gritty. You can't really fully dissolve it all. There's a little bit left at the bottom that you kind of chew on after you get done with a little espresso with some of that sugar in the sugar in the raw. That's that's what that flavor is. Right on through this second third of the Espinosa Murcielago. Looking really good. Of course, as per usual, I hit the uh, stop record button and then the ash just elegantly falls off. Fortunately, again, not in my lap, which is always nice. But um, so far, moving through the second third, Moving through the second third, there have been some nice little hints of floral kind of citrus notes. So a little touch of like jasmine kind of florality, maybe even a little kind of uh, juniper, almost pine, right? So we have reached the conclusion of the Espinosa Murcielago. We are in the final third and just finishing up this stick. Some final notes. With this particular cigar, I really enjoyed all of the wonderful kind of nuanced flavors of chocolate, coffee, that floral component that kind of came in in the second third was gone by the final third, and it never really came back in the way that it appeared in the second third, so that was fun, just to kind of have some junipery kind of pine, and then also kind of like that jasmine florality that was just really tasty. As far as pairings go, I think that even though this is Mexican San Andres in its wrapper, Nicaraguan binder and filler, which seems like a common blend nowadays, but it's very unique. And with that little hint of florality, I feel like it kind of leaves the door open for a lot of great pairings. You could go gin and you can go with gin cocktails on this. I really like the fact that there's almost in the second third, not just the florality, but this concentration of coffee, leather, and some chocolate. And I feel like uh, for this particular stick, what I would really like to have would be like a nice semi-big red wine. I kind of want something with a little jammy kind of fruit component to it. And then I also want that acidity from the tannins on the red wine to kind of complement that sweetness that I got when I mentioned that there was like almost a Demerara type sugar to it. So I think that red wine would be a great pairing with this, specifically more of like your kind of spicier uh, Riojas of the world or even some Merlot's Cabernets you can kind of mix in there, depending upon the intensity and the body of those red wines. I feel like if you wanted to, you could go as far as to doing kind of like a New York Sour, something along the lines of the Nevada Sour that we did with the Frey Ranch when we paired the Illusion Gary G's to it. I think that that would be a really nice kind of um, interesting pairing with the egg white on top, the red wine, and some whiskey just to kind of round out with some tannins. So. Tannins, 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 tannins to match up with kind of that, that sweet Mexican San Andres wrapper that they have in this blend. But overall, $9 a stick. This is definitely a box-worthy cigar if you like something that's kind of medium to full body and also um, has that Mexican San Andres wrapper that gives you such nice, rich, complex flavors like this one does. For me, it's a solid smoke and I thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe below if you found value in this episode. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of the Murcia Lago by Espinosa and Espinosa Cigars in general. And I will catch you again for another cigar review.